We're back on the siren. We're going to start on chapter 12. Chapter 12, we start doing all the deck furniture, the all the different grates. As well as drawing the, starting to draw the holes for the masts. I'm going to hold off on the masts. I'm just going to start doing these uh, deck furniture. I still have to find the drill bit for the masts. So first thing I need to do is make this. I'm going to make this grate. That should give us all the details and make the rest of them so I can show this one and I'll do the rest of them off camera. Instructions say 8th inch by 16th strip, which happens to be the same type of strips used for the deck and the whole planking itself. It talks about doing lap joints. Those should be simple enough with this. Um, nice sharp exacto knife, etc. I'll give you a nice lap joint. Lap joint is one beam over tops the other one with a notch cut out of bowl so they fit flush top and bottom. And you can see that here, how they do them. The sides are lapped on the bottom. Uh, uh, sides are lapped, yeah, sides lapped the bottom, tops are lapped, the centers are lapped on the top, or vice versa. You know what I mean. So I'm gonna get to making those. I need a beam for each side, and then four to go down the length. To do that, I'm going to do the kind of the same thing I did for the um, the pin rails. <sighs> Take two pieces of wood, glue them together on one end, so that I have so I can kind of bolt at the same time and have um, consistent uh, lengths. Also, I started out with two that are the same length. Okay, so the ends are glued together. I can start getting these cut out. On a quick note, you'll notice I have wax paper at the top of my plants, so I don't actually stick to the plants. It's easier to get that wax paper off, get the wood off the wax paper, than it is to get the wood off the plants. And that way you don't damage the plants either. So first step on, on this combing. Combing goes from there to there. First step, I'm going to have to cut that end off so it's flush with each other. Again, like I mentioned before, whenever I cut, I only cut one direction so that I'm pushing against a nice solid surface. I don't have the, as much uh, chance of tearing out the wood. So that I have them flush with each other. I can go ahead and measure these things out. Mark it off. And then I can just come in and cut it off. And just come in and cut it off. So that should give me two pieces that are pretty much exactly the same length. Those will be these two side pieces of the combing. So I need four more to go crosswise. That should be close enough. A little sanding will smooth everything off, make everything flush. If you cut these so they overhang the other ones just by a hair, then you'll end up with enough to sand off, make everything flush. I'll be honest with you, this is the first time I've done lap joints on a ship. So we're going to see how this works out. So with these... The goal is to have them go together. Somewhat like that. But they need to be overhanging each other. Uh, doesn't 
matter which way overhang right now because I can flip whichever side's going to be up. So if I take these and come in, figure out where the halfway mark is. She will just come in. Trim it. And it hopefully went deep enough that then I come on this one. Trim it. And with that, should give me a nice lap joint. A little sandy, I think it'll be perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these lap joints cut, including the ones in the center, and come back when I'm ready to glue this frame together. Okay, here I got parts cut up now for the combing. Notch is a little white on one of them. I'm not going to worry about it. The rest fit pretty good. You know, if I put that towards the bottom, you're just not going to really be seen anyway, but uh, we'll see which way it goes. The next thing is i got to glue them together. To do that, I have my jig set up here with the one, two, three blocks. So that I have a nice square solid foundation to work against. So I can put each one of these things in and get them glued in place. Again, I have the uh, um, wax paper down on the drawing. So I don't damage the drawing. And these one, two, three blocks will allow me to get them square, everything square in here. Oops. Assuming I put the pieces in the right direction. I might have to do some little more trimming on this. So we'll say I'm a little wide still with the uh, cross pieces. But that's why we set it up and, and dry fit it. But eventually every piece will go in and be square thanks to these blocks. Okay, so while the combing is drying, I'm putting together the grate. The grate is just made up of basically uh, uh, crenellated pieces of wood that just fit together in an overlap. All you gotta do is get them together and glue them together. To glue them together, a little bit of thin down glue spread across the bottom. A little bit of thin down white glue spread across the bottom. Should glue them together. So just to reiterate, I've got all the grates made up. They're not glued yet. Glued or cut the size yet. But Model Expo does give you a whole bunch of extra grates. I, I could probably make almost a complete another set of grates with what's left over of the pieces of wood here. Um, if you plan on doing more ships in the future, don't throw those away. Put them in a safe spot because chances are you may need them. So I'll get back, glue these things together, and then I'll worry about starting to finish up this one grate. So I have all my grates made up. I'm starting to trim them down to fit the size where they need to be. This one's going to be this, this uh, front one. So I've got it. Two sides smoothed off, third side cut to length. I just need to cut the fourth side. These grates are actually designed to be the exact size you need for the hatch in the deck. So you figure out where you want to cut it. And that will end up with a flat side right next to one of the pieces of wood. Cut it off and it should fit exactly. I'm trying to get the drawing to move over, it's not. And it should fit exactly where you need into the grate. I've been playing around with how to do the combings on it. I have one done right here with the proper laps.
And what I did to do that is I took two pieces of wood, cut to length. I can cut two pieces, two, two pieces of wood, cut too long. And just glued those onto the sides, like that. So I'll do that now. And with the glue dry, once with the size glued on, glue dry, I can come back in and start cutting the, um, turn the stripe around, cutting the uh, lap joints in. What that will do is it'll give me a nice tight, pretty tight fit on the, the edges here. without ending up loose like my first one was. This one I'll end up gluing this to the deck and then gluing the grate into it. And it'll actually look better than these other ones. But I'm gonna keep going like this because I can go through like I did the small one and kind of make the groove around the edge. Grab my little file and make sure it's square. I have to be careful because this file isn't actually square. It's just a hair round on the corners. So do that. Come back with another couple of pieces here. Longer than I need. And you can come through on the side. Got one lap joint. Make sure it fits right. Come through. Scribe the other side. Cut it in. And then you can just do some fine tuning, make it fit just right. Side four. And there you go. A hatch with lapped joints. Wait right up so you can see it there. That'll look pretty good when it's on the ship. Um, make sure you make sure you got your good side up. This side, this is going to be the bottom because there's a chunk missing here. So I'll put this side up. Sand the top fairly smooth. Make sure my edges can be seen with the hatch. Okay, I got all my uh, grates done. I stained them up with the uh, same stuff I did the deck with. Probably could be a little bit darker, but that's fine. So now I got a glue in place that that's, we're supposed to put the shot rails next to them. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do that after they're glued in place. But the first thing I need to do is figure out the centering. So I marked out a center here and a center here. If you remember from earlier on, when I did the deck. I said that my deck ran out by one beam width towards the stern. So I need to compensate that with my center lines. So I have the first. Great angle pin is the one right in the center of the deck, which goes right about there. I've been trying to see if I can, how centered I can get it, which right there seems pretty good. 
make note of where I'm at here, and then I can glue it in. I'm going to do that the same for every one of these grates. So I can get them all in and then come back. Okay, so here we're doing the shot racks on either side, each side of the uh, um, hatchways. I did these, cut these the same way I did the, um, the um, pin rails. Take two pieces of wood of the right size, not length, but X, Y dimensions. Tape them together, glue them together, whatever, on one end. And then mark them off so I can cut them so they come out to the exact same length. And then I went ahead and laid them on the plan, marked out where the the holes are supposed to be for the, the cannonballs. Now, I don't believe these would be accurate to the real ship. I don't think they would have taken a plank, drilled some holes in it to put the shotguns on, or the, the cannonballs in. There would have been a wood frame around that they sat in, or a metal rail or something, I believe. I'm not going to go that far and change it up. I'm just going to follow the instructions and do them this way. So I marked out where all the holes are, or the, the divots are. They're not actually holes all the way through. They're just divots that you can glue the, the cannonballs into. Three sets of them. And all I'm going to do is take a drill bit, either in my pin, pin vise or in the Dremel, and just do a divot with that drill bit. Uh, it says to do it with a... See the cannonballs are 1.5 millimeter. Doesn't see what size drill to use. So I'll figure out which one of these I want to use for the cannonballs. Make a divot. Get these all shaped up. Throw a varnish on them. On the real ship, I have a feeling all these combings and shot rails and stuff would be painted. I do not know what color they would be painted. Black, red, don't know. Yellow ochre, I don't know. I'm going to do it the way the instructions say. I'm going to do it with just basically varnish it. I think the instructions actually want you to put a golden oak, but the golden oak stain comes out really brown. I don't like the looks of it. But if I just do the varnish on there, that kind of looks like a yellow ochre. There's just a clear varnish on it, just for the natural wood and the clear varnish. It's a clear polyurethane. So I'm going to do it that way. Drill these, stain them up, or coat them with the Danish oil, stick them on, and throw the, and later on I'll throw the uh, clear, poly, clear polyurethane on them. And that'll give me a reasonable color, I believe. Um, you know. Okay, so next is up is the capstan. Um, not a lot of direction on the capstan for coloring. In the pictures, it's pretty much natural with like a brown top. Instructions say they've prototype had it black, so I'm going to take them up on that because I need to get some, I feel the need to have some uh, contrast on the deck. And it says that the whelps, or excuse me, the uh, chocks are also black. So I've kind of laid it down in the order assembly. There's a small cap that's black, and there's a large disc that goes under it, slightly smaller one the cogged wheel it's not a gear which is the holes where the rods would go in for the crew to turn the captain another disc then there's a uh, piece of dowel and there's the eight whelps one thing i did on the whelps is since i want that contrast and i figured a captain would get dirty in use so i did not i don't know you can tell but i did not sand the edges of the whelps i left them with the laser char on there and a little bit rough I figure it's going to be worn from use and get dirty and all that. But it basically goes together from top to bottom. This disc goes on there. It goes there. Make sure the bigger one's on top of the smaller one. Or the medium sized one. There's supposed to be a bit of an overhang. And then that whole stack stacks up oops, there to give you the top of the capstan with a slight overhang on this top disc here. Then you'll have a dowel and all the whelps that go around it to form it. I'm going to go ahead and get this glued together and come back and get the uh, chocks in place. 
Okay, the capstan is pretty much built. I'm just adding the uh, chocks in place. For that I have the recommended wood. I think it's like eighth inch by three by whatever, eighth inch by one thirty second. All I'm doing is taking a little chisel, cutting a triangle off. That's going to be too wide, but then I can adjust it to fit. Very carefully pick it up. And then lose it. Plenty of wood here. Let's try this again. Very carefully pick it up. See how it fits. And try it in multiple ones because I can almost guarantee you're not going to get these things even all the way around. Get a little bit of glue on it and stick it in the one it best fits in. There are two rows of these. One at the top and one towards the bottom. So you have plenty of options to figure out where they're going to, the pieces are going to fit the best. Try to get them in a line so there's a nice circle going around. That'll look the best, but not honestly. When you're done with this ship, that's going to be one of those things that you're going to look at, that somebody's going to look at the ship closely and before noticing it, and then they're going to go, oh, wow. Okay, I have the companionway ladder built. Didn't show that building up because it's literally eight pieces of wood or whatever glued together in a rather simplistic manner. Just everything's butted together. Excuse me. Next is the companionway itself. So I've got it here. The plans. First thing I'm working on is the back of it. The uh, port side, I think. Yeah, port side. And it's just eighth inch wide, um, one three sixth inch planks glued edge to edge. All three sides are the same way, and the roof is the same way with, with some variations to it. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these together, make up all the sides, and then come on back. Excuse me. This is what I came up with for gluing the planks together. Stuck on a piece of tape so they can be held together, and then I can just roll it, put glue on the edge, flatten it back out, and weight it down, and that'll glue these edges together. I've made these longer than need to be. That way I can cut it to the exact shape size I want. I'm going to do that for every one of these. Um, the fore and aft shows one, two, three, four, five planks plus a 16th inch wide plank. I'm just going to use six planks together and just cut it to width. And I think that'll be the best way to do it rather than trying an exact fit this way. I'll make it wider than it needs to be and then trim it to get the exact fit I want. So I'm going to glue all sides up like this and then come back. My parts for the companion way are glued up. I have both sides, the back, the doors, and both parts of the top. Need to do a little sanding on this side to get rid of the crud. The other side is nice and clean, so that's what I want. I'll sand both sides lightly. Cut them to shape. So I'm just going to use my miter box, cut them to shape. You know, square up one end, then cut its length for the other end. These should all be the same length for these three. The doors will be shorter, but these three, the back and both sides, will be the same length. So it comes the same uh, same height above the deck. Then they'll have to be made sure that they fit the width. And then I can glue them together into a nice square block. With that, for my squares, I'm just going to use a couple of uh, one, two, three blocks here. And then it gives you a nice square corner. So I can glue two of them together, let it dry. And then turn it and put two more pieces together and let it dry. You get a nice square um, box that way. Okay, we're back. I have the companion weight and the capstan glued in place. I don't have the doors on the, the, the companion weight in place yet, but I'll get those later. Uh, next up is the binnacle. I have all the parts here. I haven't cleaned them up yet. I have three pieces of 3 16 inch stock. The top, side, back, two sides, two pieces of molding, I don't know if you need one or two, and all the little doors for the front. 
instructions here showing a door on the side. I'm not sure what we're doing with that, but uh, we'll figure it out. Don't have the bell and wiring out yet, but first I just need to get this thing good together. So I'll get these things cleaned up and come on back. Okay, reading the instructions. We glue three pieces of wood together here to form the basic structure of the binnacle. Glue the back on, the sides on, then the top. And then there's doors that go on the front. Three on the bottom, two on the top. But then the finished product shows there's doors on the side as well. I don't see anything cut out for those. Maybe I'm missing them. Maybe I'll just have to cut them out myself. I don't care. That's easy to know. We didn't get enough lumber to build the binnacle three times over other than the pre-cut parts. So next is to go ahead and glue the back in place. And then both sides. I'm just using wood glue for this. The instructions do mention that you might want to, if you want to stain it, you want to stain it beforehand. If you're careful with your glue, then you can stain it afterwards and not end up with the blotchiness. But this back piece is going to go on and it needs to be flush with the top and the sides. Or as close as you can get it. Once that's glued on and dried, you can go ahead and just touch up the sides if needed. And the top. Bottom's not that import, important because it's going to get another piece glued down there anyway. So let's see how the sides fit. I think that'll be okay. It looks like I do need to do a little bit of sanding on it though. One thing about a wooden ship model like this is that's as close to scratch build as you're going to get without actually scratch building something. So the next thing is to get the top of it on. It says to bevel the edges of the top piece, which I already did. And this thing's going to go on. So that's pretty much centered. So that I'm going to let completely dry. But I think I can go ahead and get these doors in place. I need to shape them or trim the edges first. Should be three smaller and two larger doors. It looks like the two larger doors go on the top. And it looks like they work best with the grain running left right. I don't know if these are doors or drawers, but probably doors. Supposedly there were lanterns stored in here. So you can see the compass that would normally be here. We'll put one on either side. These things look like they'd actually be better that way. Before they try, I get the one in the center so I can get everything looking halfway decent in spacing. Something like that. And then you have the two bottom pieces. Same thing, just trim off where they were attached to the rest of the wood. I'm not worrying about sanding the char off these. I think that'd be more trouble than it's worth. Basically, the only char you're going to see is pretty much on the bottom. And you're not going to see that anyway. We'll see how they fit. Looks like they're just a, that was a tad long. Yeah, that thing go right there. A little bit of glue in here favoring the bottom where we're not going to see it. And 
then get it to my something like that. Now, once it's all dry, I have to put a piece of wood on either side. To figure out what I'm doing there. And then there's supposed to be three holes drilled in the top. I'm gonna to wait till this thing dries to do that. The drawing here indicates there's handles on it, as well as something that's inside of it. And the picture shows round handles. Don't know what I'm doing there. I think you probably just put a black line there or something to create a handle and the hinge holes. There's a piece right here. Well, it's not in this, no, it's in this picture. You can just barely see it. So, and then everything is done. There's also a piece of wood that goes inside the legs where it actually attaches to the deck. So I'll get those done as well. I'm gonna do those off camera. But next I gotta do the bell. So I use the 28 gauge wire, the bell itself, and then you can glued or soldered together and made black. So I'm gonna let this dry and we'll come back and do that part. So there we go, after much swearing and gnashing of teeth, we have the ship's bell done that goes on top of the binnacle. The instructions here for doing them are not to scale, obviously. I think otherwise the bell would be huge on that binnacle. The last thing you do is stick that bell on the binnacle after I drill the holes in the side. Okay, so I have the binnacle in place. The bell's all painted. The wire's been around. Like I said before, you didn't want to see me video uh, wires being bent and the bell being assembled because there's just been a lot of uh, frustration and uh, foul language. It's not an easy thing to do, getting everything in shape, um, but it can be done. Next is the ship's wheel and the tiller. The tiller just being a stick coming out that has a bulb carved on the end of the ship's wheels, multiple pieces. Have the wheel itself started to be painted up here. It's a cast metal piece, so I did my usual thing with the metal, um, prime it, new wood on it. This one here has a black crown. I'm going to still coat it with a brown wash. I want to get darkened up quite a bit because it's something that'd be worn, dirty. But in the meantime, we still have the pieces of the, the ship's wheel to go together, the helm. Two uprights, two discs, and a piece of dowel makes the up makes the frame. I still need to get the little pieces of wood on the base here. They're supposed to be 36 inch square for the cleats amount to the deck. So I have to make those because we don't have 30 inch 32 inch square wood. We have one thirty-second by one sixteenth, I believe it is. You just cut it in half, and it gives you the right width, right look. First thing on these, I need to get the, the sanded up. I need to get the disc glued to the end of the um, dowel, and then, like the binnacle, which I, the binnacle I did in a uh, Puritan pine stain. So I have some uh, contrast on the deck. I'm going to do these in the same stain. I'm going to do the, binic, the bits in the same stain as well, give them a darker look to them. So those are together. I'm going to do the sanding. I'm going to stain these up. And we'll come back and get them assembled. I will need to drill a hole in either end of this disc or this shaft for a wire rod to go through. Uh, 22 gauge, it says. So this is the thicker wire rod wire and that becomes the shaft that the wheel actually mounts through okay i have the uh, <clears throat> ship's wheel completely built all the different parts here stained up and painted the cylinder here is just a piece of dowel two discs on either end and then a black wire i drilled in either end and put a short piece in it's too long right now i'll trim it once everything's installed 
to glue it on since this deck has already been coated with um, Danish oil. I'm going to use super glue. And hopefully, unlike other parts of this ship, I'll actually get it centered on the deck. <laughs> so if I come to about where the wheel is, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, side to side. I'd make this 13th board and go to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13th board here. You can see it'd be off center. Well, I'm going to center it up on this line right here. Because that would get it centered up. I'm going to actually put a little bit over it. A little too port from this line right here. That'll get it pretty much centered up. Because remember, these planks are running to starboard for some reason. You just glue that down so it's fairly centered, upright, and let it dry there. I'm also going to put some glue between the wheel and the capstan. Um, next step would be to do all the rigging for the tiller. Yeah, I should put the tiller placing all the rigging for the tiller. Rigging is going to wait until I coat this all with a uh, varnish, a clear satin foliar thing to protect it because you do not want to paint coat your rigging with the polyurethane it will make it all fuzzy so I'll let this thing dry in place which it pretty much has next part of the agenda is to make the ship's tiller the tiller is the horizontal beam that goes on the rudder I can find my drawings here tiller and somewhere here I have the piece cut out for it. Piece of wood cut to length. Basically going to make a bulb on the end and everything else is going to be tapered down to that bulb. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where I want the how long I want the bulb to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. Then I can start shaving it down. What you want to do is you want to taper it from the end that attaches to the rudder to the bulb on the end. This thing is already the same width as the rudder, so I don't have to worry about that. And we'll see how I can do this. There's plenty of this wood to practice with, so if I screw it up, no big deal. I can just cut off another piece. They give you plenty of lumber for this ship for stuff like this. So we'll see how this works. If I just come in, go down a little bit there. These will just be stop cuts so I don't go all the way to the end. And then you just come in and hopefully by funky grain this way I try to where I cut off before I try to cut off another section and do it make the carving and the gouge just kind of just dug in and just split it off because grain is running weird on this end but when I just worked on this other end I could come in here and it would just shave off like butter using the, the um, chisel so you have to play with the lumber you came with the kit and find out which way is going to carve the best for you. So those are garbage. Have one made up here. Nice and smooth. Looks good. I'm going to stain this up and then glue it in place. Now we have the fun part, building the, the pump. Pump is built up for the instructions from a 3 16 by 1 16 piece of wood for the base cut to length, and then a 16th by 16th inch piece of wood around it for the combing. 
Does the cover make sense? Because that means the comb is no taller than the base, but whatever. I would have figured it would be a little bit lower. That's fine. First thing to do is just cut off the length of this wood. The proper length. As Paul from Fabret says, get the old icrometer out there and measure it out. So, I'm going to use a miter saw there rather than an exacto knife so I can make sure I get it some semblance of being square. And there you go. One base for the pumps. <clears throat> so as to, you can also, um, lap joint these. I'm not going to lap joint these because the lap joint would be so small you'd never see it. Get you down here a little closer you can see. What I want to do is I'm just going to glue a piece of wood on either side, let it dry, and a piece of wood on, you know, trim it and do, do the ones on the end. I just need to do the ones on the end, let it dry, then do the ones on the side. That way my longer pieces always go bow to stern. No, wait. Yeah, that goes a long way. So to glue these in place, I'm just going to use a little wood glue, since, well, it's wood. <clears throat> Same tight bond I've been using for everything else. Let's get a toothpick here free. I'm going to do the ends first. I'm just going to cut off a couple of chunks of this. And just glue them right on the end. I have a piece of wax paper here so I don't stick to my work surface. And then get these in place on the ends. And use my improvised clamps here to clamp them up. While that's drying, another thing I need to do is I need to get two pieces of what's this eighth inch dowel, cut to length for the the pump body. Should let them dry longer, but no reason to. So two more pieces. They go on the ends. Or, ends or sides, I should say. And these I will let dry for touching again. Another thing I'm going to need, knowing in advance, is the handle of it. So I'll cut. Off a handle to length, and I need the upright. Only one piece for the upright, and that's going to have to get some shaping done to it. We'll see what we can do with that. Okay, the upright I want to work on next. It gets a slot cut in it for the handle. So we'll see how bad I can mess this up. Probably be easier to build it out of three pieces of wood, layer them, but we'll see how this works. Like they say. Just 
probably a better way to do this when I'm doing it, but we'll see how it works out. like that. So something like that. And that's the upright. Just need to round the end of it, which I can just do with a little bit of sandpaper. Well, it shows a square. So I just need to wrap it around several times and build this with thickness and then paint the handle black. So it'll be something like that. Easy enough done. So I'll get that done, get it painted black. These, other than the wire, I pretty much have everything here for my uh, pumps. Actually, in mind, I'm not going to use the smaller diameter dowel to stick out of these. I'm just going to use some of this 28 gauge brass or black wire and that should be about the right size actually for this belt. So I need to get these painted up, a couple of drilled in these, these painted up, the handles these painted up and then I have some brass used that I made up to go on the handle that will end up being where the pump rods actually connect to. So I'll get everything painted up and assembled and come on back. This is just going to be normal glue up for assembly. So there I have everything in place on the stern I need other than the doors for the companionway. I'll get those later. Let's glue that. This wheel is going to be glued in place as I figure out which way I want to turn up on it so it looks best. Tillers in place, wheels in place, binnacle, companionway, capstan, and pumps are all in place. So that includes this chapter, other than the uh, cannons and caronauts, which I'll do later. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.